Hey guys, and in this episode we're going to be adding a quick quarantine system. We've had some issues with our legal department getting back to us quickly enough to release the API. And uh, I sent the email out on Tuesday night. I still haven't had a, uh, I still haven't had a reply, so we're going to move on and we're going to make uh, a quarantine system in the meantime. So I'm just going to do some quick graphic editing. We want a group and we want three radio buttons. These radio buttons are going to be used later on to determine whether you want to quarantine the file, whether you want to delete the file, or whether you want to do nothing. Um, I would strongly recommend you do not delete the file at the minute. Um, anything you delete is going to be pretty hard to get back. It's not going to be impossible to get back, but if you delete something that's, let's say, critical to the system, say you delete something like Explorer and you don't have... a uh, this protection on uh, yeah you, you're not going to get Explorer back very easily um, so at the minute I would strongly advise that you don't use the delete function it will work you know but don't don't use it um, so we're going to put quarantine uh, system in place this is going to be a fairly it's going to be a very simple version of a quarantine system so you can have three options quarantine is going to move the file this will not work if the file is running um, or if you don't have permission. Uh, we will deal with that in later episodes. Um, like I said in one of the episodes previous to this, we will have to rebuild this at some point. And at some point, at that point, we'll then modify it so that it works. Um, but anyway, so I'm um, sorry guys, I haven't, haven't actually been able to bring you the API. It is finished. I have been toying around with it um, but hopefully legal are going to get back to us on Monday so this video will go today Sunday um, I was hope really hoping that they were going to get back to me before lunch yes before lunch Saturday they were open Saturday so um, they must have had short staff or the person I emailed must not have been in um, so yeah, we'll just deal with it and we'll just carry on as normal. So we have our two buttons. And uh yeah, we're gonna uh, yeah, we're gonna add a checkbox. No, no. What do I want a checkbox for? Mm, no, no, no point. We're just gonna we're just gonna add another Another radio button. Yeah. So we're going to call this nothing. We'll do nothing. So this button has to be here because. Oh, I'll explain it in a minute when I'm finished. So I'm going to line that up and make it look. Uh, Presentable. And now we're gonna we're gonna uh, move on, and we're gonna we're gonna make ourselves a new f unit. I'm doing this on the fly, obviously, because I I have a I have now got two two ep two episode tens recorded. Or well, I'm recording this one now, and I already have one, so um, it will be coming out as episode eleven. Um. Hopefully next week. Hopefully they've got back to us by then. If not, I'm going to have to chase them up. So you're going to make a new um, unit. And we're going to call it Quarantine Files. We're going to call it Quarantine Files because later on we will be making one called Quarantine Processes. And at that point, feel free to just chuck them in one called Quarantine. Or Quarantine System. So we're just going to make one function to do all of our quarantining. And uh, we're going to call it quarantine, uh, quarantine infected file. It's going to be a procedure, and it's only going to need one variable. And it wants the variable file path from our scan engine. And after that, we're just going to do. Sorry, I dropped the knocked the mic off right then. So yeah, we're just going to use if statements to sort out whether we're doing it, whether we're doing the functionality or not. 
So we're going to need to declare the function. Yep. So that we can use it outside this unit. And we're also going to need we're going to need form one. We're going to need main form. And uh, yeah, so we're going to need main form. Uh, this is where all of our uh, radio buttons are held, so we need to declare it if we're hoping to use it. I've misspelled this. There's an L in the middle. Right, so uh, we're going to name our buttons quickly. I forgot to name them. So we're just going to call this one quarantine file. We'll name this one del, del file, delete file. We we'll call this do nothing. And we're going to put RB on the end of these. Should have really done that first for radio button. And then that way, when we're coding, if we come across the, if, if we get a bit lost and we come across it in the list, we know that it's a radio button. Right, so now we've done that. We are going to save, we're going to go back. And we're going to start our if function. So, very simple principle, if the checkbox, if the check, if the radio button is checked, so form one, we want quarantine or qual file, and then we want the parameter checked, then we're going to do a begin, we're going to put our Put our functionality in there now next we're going to do it with the delete files if form one dot del file dot checked then we want to begin again and there's no point in adding this last one um got a bit carried away there yeah there's no there's no point in adding it Yeah, so there's no point in adding it because this is just an empty function. We want it to be, we want it to be so it's on or it's, yeah, you've got two options and off. So do nothing literally does nothing. Because you have to have one of them checked, the do nothing does nothing. So you have a quarantine file, you have delete file, and then you have do nothing. By default, I'm going to leave it set to do do nothing, I think, just to be safe. I don't want it deleting things that um, might actually be uh, needed in the long run. So Windows files, other things like that. All right, so let's get back into the code inside of it. So... Uh, we do need to create a direct, create a directory. No, we're just going to do that by hand. Um, it's going to be quicker to do it by hand. You just make the folder. Um, we didn't do it in report, did we? No, we don't create a folder in report. So we're going to close that. It will be something we add later on. Is a is a whole setup function, and we'll get the scanner to set itself up. So we're just going to put delete file on this one and the file path. Very simple. Um, a few thing, key points to look out for. It will not turn up in your recycle bin. It will just be deleted. Um, you could put a message box in here like this. And um, if you did a custom one, you could actually get the reply. We, we probably will do that at a later date. We'll, we will tweak the... Um, quarantine system because this has been done on such a short notice we're gonna we're gonna leave it basic for today um so yeah that's that's all you need in this one uh and in the quarantine file one we're simply going to use move file 
so uh, it, it requires two parameters, I think three if you want to use three, um, but the old file, the new file, um, uh, old file, new file, and no, there isn't a third parameter. So you need to uh, p character these because it's a wide function. Um, the string needs to be in a wide set of characters. So we do that by using p character. And then simply what we're going to do is we're going to set a constant for the folder name. Um, eventually what we'll do is uh, we will move these all into the config and then you can edit the config as you see fit. At the minute, um, if this being a running tutorial, we're just going to leave it as a constant inside the quarantine files uh, unit and that's going to be it. Right, so we need to do the same thing we did in the reports here. We need to get the folder we're working in. So we're going to change this string out for one that we we want. So we're going to need to declare a variable and a string. And what to name it? We'll name it quarrel path, the quarantine path. And that's a string. So we're now going to come down and we're going to change our the variable that gets filled with quarantine path or quarrel path for short. And then we need to change the folder it goes to. So we want qual folder, the constant we declared above. And we just need to put the folder dashes in or the back the backslashes in. Um to make sure it knows it's a folder. And so I'm struggling here to get the uh, get the hint to turn up. So we're going to go with just <clears throat> pausing the video and checking. So the first one is the indeed the old file. So we just put file path in there. And now we need to edit our quarrel path to give us our new file location. Now what we want to do is we want to extract the file name so what we're doing here is I'm spelling terribly so we're just going to try it again so we're just calling extract file name and it just requires the path of the file so you just put file path in and then what we're going to do is we're going to add another string to this file address and we're going to give it a different extension to the one it currently has so we do this in case it is malicious and we don't want to execute it again so we're going to give it an, ex an extension of dot quarrel so dot quarantine pretty much right and now we've done that uh, yeah Looks right. Yeah, so we, we do this uh, purely to stop the file running again. So if it's a .exe, um, renaming it .quarrel, um, or just adding .quarrel to the end, stops it running. So we're going to hit save. And we're going to copy the function name, because I'm going to use it in a second. And we need to come over to the scan engine. And first of all, we need to declare it in the top. So we're going to declare quarantine files. Like that. And then we're going to come down and where our function is. Where do we, right here, where we add it to our list view is where we're going to, is where we're going to decide whether we want to quarantine it or not. So, we're going to paste our function name in, and 
this is probably the best place for it. At a later date, we're going to add the fact that it's being qu quarantined, pardon me. Um, but for now, we're just going to either quarantine it or delete it or nothing. So we're just going to come along and add this to the same part of the loop in every detection method. So that if it gets detected in that detection method, it will get taken. And we forgot to put our quarrel path in. So we're going to put our new file path in. If I can get it to highlight. Like that. Paste that in there. And that will now work. And we're going to do debug. And I hadn't set the folder up. So when I ran it the first time, it did nothing. So we're going to exclude .ras. Um, just so that our uh, scanner goes faster. Uh, mainly because I don't want to take you guys' time up whilst we're just running the scanner back and forward. So in the meantime, I've pasted a load of SCAR test files, them ones. And as you can see, they've gone from where they were. And they are now sitting in our quarantine folder. Um, with the new file extension. So even though these are harmless text files... Um, we, you know, if we de if we detect it, we we want it to become harmless. Um, so it's not a really good it's not a good example using a text file, but uh, if you used a program, an application, renaming it .quarrel gets rid of the chance that it'll execute. It's not impossible, and I've seen malware before add extensions to the executables list. Um, yeah, add it. Uh, add executables, uh, add um, extensions to the executables list. So it's not fail safe, not by a long shot, but um, for a basic quarantine system, it will work. Um, so we now should, we can now see that there's actually too many um, files scanned. And that's because it scanned our quarantine folder as well. So we're gonna take these two lines and we're gonna put them at the top so that they don't get countered. So our first line is increase our scan count. And so we're gonna paste these two up here. Now I did this and cut it out. So if you want a second to pause the video and read what the code says, it simply says extract the file, the file path from the current file. And if it matches the quarantine folder, exit. We don't want to scan our quarantine folder. It's not a good idea you scan your quarantine folder. You're just going to get loads and loads and loads and loads of extra detections for the same file. Right. And the line above is the same line we had last time. If it's our application, we don't want to scan it. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I will bring you the... API hopefully next Saturday um, I'm hoping to have it signed off hopefully Monday and you know with you guys Friday so until then thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it